Hello everybody and welcome to the Horror Games Tutorial Part 7 but this is a bonus episode. Um, I've had a few uh, private messages and a couple of emails, people asking how to do um, a working or create a working radio in the game. Now I hope I've not got my wires crossed. A working radio is in a music playing device, not a walkie talkie that you know as a as a radio to communicate with another person, but an actual radio. So when the player, um, which we'll we we'll have it set up in a way so when the player interacts with it, they will be able to change through stations, um, and you'll also be able to use this same code. So if you have a ghost in your game or you're making a horror game and you want the um, the creature, the ghost, the the monster, the person that's you know the antagonist. If you want them to be able to interact with it, it's a very simple, quick way to do that as well. And it will all work fine. So, in order to do that, what we need to do first is we need to... So, you need WAV files, so WAV files, which is the Windows audio format ones. So, you need to get all of the free music <coughs> or the audio that you want to play first. So that's the first step. So let's just go to uh, music and I'm going to use these as an example. Um, obviously we're not going to have our radio play wood music or wood sounds, but just as an example say just for the tutorial. Um, so we're going to go, first of all, we're going to right click somewhere in our content browser where you've got space, where you want to have these files stored. You're going to right click, go to sounds, and in the sounds panel, you want to open up a, where is it, sound queue, there it is. <coughs> and this is going to be station, uh, station one, and, oops, no, I can't have a space, uh, station underscore one. And in here, we are going to have um, our audio. So you're going to open that up, and you should have a screen like this with an output. And what we want to do is let's just highlight these. So left click, shift, and left click on the last one, and then drag and drop. So these are all now in our, our radio station. So these would be free music, free songs which you can get online, just make sure you get copyright free and uh, free to use licenses. So you want to drag all of that music into your uh, sound queue and you're gonna get a random node. So right click and then random, pop that in and then one, two, three, four, five, six. So we know we've got six outputs and we've only got two inputs. So we click this add input button here so we've now got three so one two three more and we're going to drag these in just connect them up just like this <coughs> and that's that done so I'm going to save that and now we'll have just random sounds played so this will be music that will be um, flicking through in a sense so what we're going to do next is now that we've got our sound queue created we're going to put, uh, make a blueprint now to make a blueprint we are going to um if you've got a model of a radio then that's great we can drag that into our scene and then we can use this as our blueprint actor our static mesh in our blueprint actor um, so right click and then we're going to <coughs> excuse me go to blueprint and then click actor I'm going to name this our radio interact and stations and we're going to drag that in so we've got it in our scene and now we want to use this as the mesh so we're going to right click on it and then browse to asset, open up our blueprint. So you should have this screen. And in our 
radio blueprint. We're going to go to um, our content browser, control space. I'm going to drag our radio in. So now if you look at your level, your scene, you'll notice that we have a small electrical Bluetooth speaker system. <coughs> so now that that's set up, we need to make sure it's got um, collision. So let's drag that in and then where it says static mesh, double click, you should have a screen that looks like this. And you're going to make sure that on this screen, we go down and we have it set as use simple collision as complex. And then you want to add a box simplified, which I've already got one, so I can delete that one. So save that, close, and then compile and save on our blueprint. So now we're going to go and add in our audio. So we want to where we created our sound. So we add our station one. There we go. So our station one sound cue is now in. So we just drag that into the blueprint. So compile and save and then into the event, uh, event graph that we can move to that now and do the code. <coughs> so save and compile and then we want to get a reference to our station, so we can drag that in. We'll use that in a second. I'm going to add a custom event, add custom event, press enter, highlight that, control C, control V. So we've got our two lines of code ready. And we're going to name this one radio on. So those that don't know, um, this is going to be, well, it's supposed to be a 10 part um, episode for part seven of the horror games tutorial so horror part seven is basically i'm just trying to go over things to help people with their interactions within games and eventually it'll lead to how to get the ghost to interact with those things as well or the creature or whatever you've got in your game so it's going to be extended out it's probably going to end up being like 20 episodes but i want to try and get in as much as i can to help people with their own games because I know there's a lot of people out there that are asking me, oh, I've been searching for this on YouTube and the internet and I can't find it. How do you make this? How do you make that? Now I've got a humongous list and I'm only one guy and I have a life <laughs> outside of YouTube. So I'm trying my absolute best to help all of you and I will answer questions. There's people that have jumped on the Discord and they've asked me questions and I've been able to help them with some of their problems. So thumbs up to that. And that's been great experience for them. So please be patient. If you are waiting for a tutorial, I will get to it eventually. So we're going to name this custom event, turn radio or radio on. So turn radio on. <coughs> and then we are going to... Da -da 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 -da. Go to this one and turn radio off. Get myself distracted there. And then save and compile. So we've got our two um, custom events. And then out of... So on this, we don't want this to auto play. So auto activate, we need to uncheck. So click on your sound cue, your audio component. Auto activate off. <coughs> And then we want to, out of this, play. But don't link it up yet. And that's going to go there. And then out of this, we want uh, play sound at location. And then we want switch. Just so we got some kind of an input. Or to let the player know that it's been interacted with. So we'll just use that. And out of the dock radio, we want to get, so drag this into your scene. And out of this one, we want to get world location. And we're going to plug that into our location on the play sound. <coughs> and then on this, we are going to, bear with me one second. And then we go, 
so we got turn radio on, play sound, and then we have a small delay. Just so it's not immediately playing the sound when you click the button to give it a second to come on. So we'll do 0 0.5. And then we're going to, out of completed, we're going to pop that into play. And then, there we go. So player turns radio on, it plays the uh, switch on audio sound. Half a second later, it'll play or activate the sound cue that we have. And because the sound cue has multiple sound sources within it, sound files, it'll pick one of them at random and play one of those um, audio files for you. <clears throat> um, if you want more than one station, so let's say, for example, you have Horror FM or you have, let's say... You know, like uh, like on Grand Theft Auto or other games that have like driving, and you can select the radio stations. A way that you could simulate that. Um, this is just a quick way. So you could Alt and left click on the completed. You can get a switch on int. So that's a switch on integer. So we're gonna. You'd ha so basically what you'd have is you would have a random integer in range and then that would go from completed into the switch on in and then you would have multiple so how we made our station one so you'd have station two station three station four let's say you have four stations you would drag all of them into this panel so you'd have one two three and four and then you would link them all up like this so out of the station, play, and you'd have them set up like this, and then it would kind of look like this, station two, station three, and then station four. And then you'd create a new pin, one, two, three, four, and then right click on the default and remove. And then you'd link that into there, that into there, that into there, and number three into there. And now our range is zero because of zero and it goes up to three. So zero to four, because there's four pins in total and zero is classed as one. So one, two, three, four. Um, and then when you turn the radio on, it will select one of these based on this random integer in range. So it'll just pick a radio station for you. So you can have many, many, many sounds within that radio plane, if that makes sense. Um, and then out of these, nothing, because you don't need to. Um, <coughs> so radio off is, we're gonna copy these, control C, control V, drag that into there. And then we are going to get this, 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 and this, if you were doing it that way. So let's just make it a little bit more simpler for now. And we'll go, Delete that, drag that in there, I'll complete it, play that, get that, control C, control V. So we'll get our station, this one, which is just this dragged in. And out of that, we'll play stop and drag that into there. That's that done. Oops. And we'll save and compile. So when the player turns the radio on, it will play the turn on sound with a 0.5 second delay. And then the station will pick a random file within that audio cue and it will play it. When the player turns off the radio, it will play the, the click button sound and then it will stop whatever sound is playing within that station one. Does that make sense? Okay, <coughs> so that's done. And just like we did with our lamp, we need to make one more custom event. Add custom event and um, bear with me two seconds um let's just reply to this quick message and we're going to call this one toggle radio on off and then we're going to go up here 
and then we're going to get a variable. So we're going to set one down here. So plus button is radio on question mark enter and then we're going to control left control click and drag to get is radio on we're going to hold b to get a branch so b as you can see here b and left click and then we're going to drag into branch drag is radio on into boolean to a true or false and out of true is the radio on if it's true then we want to turn it off is the radio on false then let's turn it on that's that simple and set up now how do we communicate with this through our player universally or globally within our blueprints now if you've watched episode one you'll see how to set up the blueprint interface with the line trace system and episode two i showed you how to implement that blueprint, uh, blueprint interface into a blueprint actor so I'll show you again. So we go to class settings and then whatever you named your blueprint interface, we're gonna go down here, click on add, and then I'm gonna get use, cause I named mine use. So you need to type in whatever you named yours to be. And then we're gonna save and compile. Now that we've done that, we have access to something called an event and then whatever you named yours as. And then when we click that, it should have this little tiny box in the top right corner, which represents that it can communicate to between all the blueprints. So that's a blueprint interface. And then out of this, we get our toggle radio on off and pop that into there. So that's that done. So this is turn. So C to comment, turn radio off and then drag over C to comment, turn radio on very good practice to comment your code so when you come back into your actor you know exactly what that code does so you don't end up with a huge mess later on um, which I've made that mistake many times so C to comment toggle on off <coughs> and this one is our event um, blueprint interface call function okay so compile save and now when we go into the game we should have the ability to okay why is that not working test it in the game actually playing I've probably set up something slightly wrong I'll fix it. No, there we go. So that's working. So it plays the audio. And because the sound is going off, whenever I click it, the radio is off. And because we haven't done one thing, if you remember when I made the lamp, what did we do here? So we set is on and set is off that's what we that's what i forgot to do probably not you lot so we drag that into there and set drag that onto there and set so is radio on true tick the box is radio on no so leave it unchecked compile save <coughs> and then that should work perfectly fine Now the radio's off. Now the radio's on. Turn off. I hope that made sense. So you now have a functioning radio for your horror games. Um, if you've got any questions, leave them in the comments. If you want to help support the channel, you can do becoming a Patreon or you can make donations on PayPal. Even just clicking that like button, sharing this with friends or people that you know are maybe struggling or just clicking the subscribe button also helps the channel. So I appreciate everybody. Thanks for watching. Thanks for taking your time to leave those nice positive comments and feedback. I do appreciate everything that you do. So thanks very much and I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.